I think everyone's tired of the cloud. I think there's, uh, there is some, t- some cloud fatigue going on. And I think that people are starting to say, you're starting to see articles that say this is all just a bunch of hype. Um, and in some respects, I think it is. I think some people are attaching cloud to their brand and to their services where it doesn't belong. Uh, but the basic fundamentals are really, really important. And so I think it is absolutely reality. And here's why. It's cheaper, better, and more reliable. Okay? Uh, the last one I think I'll get the most uh, complaints about. But very rarely in business do you get something that is all three of these. Uh, there, aren't many, there aren't many advances in technology where you get things that are better, cheaper, and more reliable. You usually have to trade. This is why this is such a buzzword, is you're getting all three of these things. Um, and it really, really makes a difference for companies. So let's talk about why it's uh, much cheaper. So one thing is when you pool computing, you lower your CapEx. How do you lower your CapEx? Well, you have higher utilization of your assets. This is the most talked about aspect of cloud computing, which is that most people have lots of infrastructure that is sitting unused or is sitting there waiting for when you might need it, but you can't predict that. Um, So that ends up driving capital costs up for every single company that they don't need it. So when you're sitting in a pool and you can can take capacity as you need it, uh, your CapEx goes much lower. Asset life, this is another, another piece of the capital equation, is that when you're sitting in a pool, it comes and goes, people can put applications on it. In traditional IT, oftentimes what happens is you have hardware that sits with an application. And let's say you want to um, decommission that application. Many times you'll say, well, we need to do a hardware refresh and we need to get everything new because we never know what's going to happen. So assets end up getting not used for their useful life. Um, And when it's pooled, it ends up uh, being much easier to do that, which brings the cost down. Uh, So that's one piece of dropping the cost. There's also uh, the fact that it's software powered. Um, This makes a huge difference. It is uh, very, very automated. Um, You know, when we, you know, you can go sign up in our site uh, at uh, the Rackspace Cloud and you can launch a server. Uh, Within five minutes, you're going to have a root password and you can load code and you can get going. Or you can provision a domain. Uh, and FTP up a WordPress blog, and it'll be on 100 servers. You can do this in five, 10 minutes. Not one person's involved. It's completely automated. This is very, very low cost to do um, and and really brings down operational uh, costs. The other piece is you can pay for what you use. Because you're using software to carve up the infrastructure, you only have to pay for what you use, and yet you still have a big pool to call on if you need more. The last piece, I think, which is not talked about a lot, is that the delivered over the web piece also lowers costs because it brings focus to a company on things that are more important. No longer uh, do you have to do the non-strategic things of running data centers and uh, cabling uh, uh, racks um, or provisioning software, dealing with Dell, whatever it might be. You no longer have to do those pieces, so you get a lot more focus in terms of the, the core pieces of your business. And finally, you get, by using a cloud provider, uh, you get economies of expertise. Um, you know, we have, we're a company of about 2,700 people. We have experts in every single area you can possibly think of. Um, so, you know, networking, storage networks, uh, load balancing, uh, operating systems, security. Um, we have sort of tons and tons of experts on these things and a lot of expertise that is very expensive for any company to replicate. And as technology gets more and more complicated, which it does every day, trying to build the expertise around all of these different components gets very expensive for for a company to do. And unless technology and hosting is at the core of what you're doing, you're not going to want to do that. If you're a retailer, you should not do that. If you um, you are a service provider, uh, you should not do that. Um, So you get a lot of benefits by being able to use a a third-party provider. So here's an example. just a very classic example, let's say you're someone who's got a terabyte of videos that you want to serve over the web, um, and you, you serve about 10 terabytes a month of video content. The traditional way to do it is to go get sort of an enterprise SAN, call EMC or, or somebody, get enterprise SAN, put it in co-location, uh, call a CDN provider, um, a content distribution provider, or not, just use traditional bandwidth. It's still going to be expensive when you're buying in small quantities. Um, you know, $2,000 a month for the storage, uh, $8,000 a month for the SAN. Um, what you can do with sort of our cloud files offer today, it's $0.15 cents a gig, uh, so it's $150 a month, and we have built in Limelight CDN uh, at $0.22 cents a gig, so that's going to be $2,200 a month. So um, 76% savings, and you get the benefits of this because we're a scale buyer. 
we, are, uh, we have put a lot of engineering into this technology to make it cheap. Um, and this is the benefits of, of specialization. Um, so radically different, different price and huge savings. And this is, this is a big reason you are seeing sort of the explosion of video over the web is this, this case study is it's getting very cheap to do and very easy to do. Um, so this is just one example. We can go through tons and tons of examples where you can save a ton of money uh, using uh, the cloud. So why is it better? A um, couple things to think about in terms of it being better. So we've got it that it's cheaper. Uh, how is it better? A uh, couple things. One is choice. Typically in an IT department, you make platform decisions. You say, we are a, a .NET SQL shop, or we are a LAMP shop, or we are a Java Oracle shop. Um, suddenly when you're pulling using service providers, you can, you can choose a lot of different technologies. You don't have to be an expert in all of them. So if the right job, if the right tool is some open source uh, project that's out there and you want to play with it, you can provision a server on a Linux, on a Linux side of shop and get it done. Um, so that you, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can use. You can mix, mix and match and you're not as married to the skills you have internally. Uh, next one, scalability. So, um, you know, this is, I think another way to talk about this is just speed. The ability to provision and get access to computing really, really quickly um, is tremendous and makes a big difference for companies and, again, lowers the costs and gets you to market really fast. The, f the fact that you can really put up all your infrastructure in, you know, an hour is just, you know, this used to take months to do. Um, so really makes a difference, uh, both when you're getting going and when you're scaling and need to burst. The last part is, um, you know, it's open. Uh, this is a, you know, Right Scale is a partner of ours. Um, Sosta is a cloud kick. These are, these are people who are building tools on top of the public clouds. Um, so if you want something that sort of makes monitoring really easy or provisioning really easy, easy or clustering or load balancing, there's companies that are building tools on top of the cloud providers that make all the common tasks you're doing all the time much easier. Um, so th there's just so much power being added all the time. Uh, we have a company called uh, Slicehost um, that is sort of, it's, it's very similar to our cloud servers offer. Um, and we had a developer just randomly build an iPhone app that allows you to provision servers and launch servers and check the status of your servers. Uh, this was just done for us. Um, and companies can go out there and use this iPhone app to run their infrastructure. Um, and this is the kind of thing that's gonna happen with all the large uh, public cloud providers out there, which makes them just tremendously powerful and more powerful every day. Okay, more reliable. This is the one that's controversial because we've all seen the stories of outages. Uh, they make big headlines and everyone says, how can you trust these clouds? Um, and look, I think there's been hiccups. There's gonna continue to be some hiccups. Um, what I would say is, uh, and I stole this idea, uh, someone at Google had made this analogy, very, very similar to planes versus cars, which is when a plane, when something happens to a plane, it is major, major news, and we all obsess on it and talk about it and what happened. Um, when a plane, when someone dies in a car, it's never discussed. This is very, very distributed, and uh, you know, which one's safer? I think that this is very, very similar to, to the way the clouds work, is that it's very difficult to replicate the uptime that the leading clouds have up there, but when they go down, the internet goes down, um, and it ends up being a massively noticeable event. And um, so look, I think that for, for some time, this phenomenon is gonna continue to slow the adoption because the perception of quality is gonna be, is gonna be suspect. But um, you know, I think over time, you're gonna have fewer and fewer plane crashes. And I think also people are going to start benchmarking their internal IT versus the services that they put out in the cloud. And they're gonna start making some, some rational choices around it. So I think that um, you know, reliability really does matter. Um, Okay, so that is, uh, this is why I think that the, the, the cloud is real and it is uh, not hype 